Gar. We are not integration. And we believe that you're a fool to try and mix with someone who doesn't love you. Our people were brought here in chains, possibly, not on the Mayflower, but in slave ships, to add to the American economy, and we've been exploited politically, economically, and otherwise ever since. And that Mr. Muhammad teaches us to love our own kind. Malcolm X, minister of mosque number seven here in New York City, a leader in the black Muslim organization. Within African American history, there are few figures so controversial as Malcolm X. Malcolm's disputed legacy of violence or courage has brought him many fans and detractors throughout the years. But what we can all agree on is his vitality in the story of African American history. Malcolm X was born in Omaha, Nebraska on May 19, 1925, originally named Malcolm Little. Malcolm was born into a large family of ten. His mother, Louise, was the backbone of the family and certainly a tried and true American mother. She worked hard at home trying to constantly keep eight children in line and out of trouble. Due to an outlying number of threats to their family from the white supremacist organization, Black Legion, Malcolm and his family had to relocate, relocate their family two different times before Malcolm's fourth birthday. Regardless of the family's efforts to avoid the Legion, their Michigan home was burned to the ground in 1929. It was clear that the Legion meant serious business. Malcolm's father was a Baptist minister and outspoken follower of Marcus Garvey. His father followed in Marcus's image, but soon ended while Mar Mar Malcolm was still a little boy. By the time Malcolm turned six, Earl Little's body was found laying across the train tracks as to what seemed to be a murder the white supremacist group was responsible for. The county sheriffs deemed it to be an accident, but the Littles could not be convinced. Following the death of the father and the family, Malcolm's mother was struggling to deal with the death of her beloved husband and was committed to a mental institution in 1939, in which pushed her kids away to a number of different foster homes. X was forced to work blue-collar jobs to earn some money for the family, which kept him out of trouble. In his early teens, Malcolm received an opinion from one of his 8th grade teachers who told him he should be a carpenter instead of a lawyer. He dropped his interest in schooling and soon found himself in a juvenile state detention home. Once his time ended, he moved in with one of the, his six sisters in Michigan. His half-sister, Ella, gladly took him in. Due to an increase of violence in Malcolm's behavior, he soon found himself known on the streets as Detroit Red, and he developed a habit of dealing drugs and often participated in gang violence. Of everything that America supposedly stands for, before a white man in this country will recognize a black man as something on the same level with... Malcolm developed an early drive for peace within society, felt called to make such grand actions in the eyes of the country, and always knew he wanted to make a grand impact on society. Following nation tradition, Malcolm replaced his surname, Little, with an X, to designate with Islam followers who believe their family names to have originated with white slaveholders. It, it, was, it was then, it was then that Kennedy called in the army. So don't you be fooled by Kennedy. Don't you be fooled by these Uncle Tom Negro preachers. When a dog attacks you, you get that dog. Malcolm found himself looking at a solid 10 years in prison for the burglary crimes he participated in. When in prison, he started to get an itch which led to the reforming of himself and his large impact on the country. The widespread of his acts drew X to become very active in the field of Islam. While spending time in prison, Malcolm became very influenced in literature, became passionate in public speaking, which later helped out his career. Spending seven years in prison, Malcolm spent most of his time educating himself and became a disciple of Elijah Muhammad, leader of the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam is an African-American religious movement founded in Detroit, Michigan by Wallace D. Fard, Muhammad in July 1930. What he set out to do was to improve spiritual, mental, social, and economic condition of the black men and women of America. From 1934 to 1975, the Nation of Islam was led by Elijah Muhammad. What attracted many people to the Nation of Islam was its ability to voice the anger and discontent that existed in every black community. The Nation of Islam also produced many proud books that highlighted black history. Members removed their surnames as marks of their slave past and replaced them with the suffix X. Converts had to follow a strict code of discipline, which included no pork, tobacco, alcohol, drugs, or extramarital sex. They demanded self-determination in the form of either an independent black state in America or a return to Africa. Going over a plethora of books and familiarizing himself with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, 
Malcolm saw how history had been constructed to show the white man's accounts of the past, but had left out the black man. An example that can be used to frame the outspoken Malcolm X is in a self-written letter directed towards the police commissioner, Stephen P. Kennedy. This letter was in regard to the Johnson X. Hinton incident of 1957. Johnson Hinton had come upon a couple of police officers who were beating a man named Reese V. Poe on the corner of 125th Street and 7th Avenue in Harlem with their clubs. Hinton called out to the officers, having gained their attention. They then turned their nightsticks on Hinton, clubbing him and cracking his skull. The officers proceeded to handcuff Hinton and take him to the 20th Precinct. By the time the evening arrived, there were over 2,000 people surrounding the present, demanding that Hinton be provided with adequate medical attention. Johnson X. Hinton, it turns out, was also a black Muslim who belonged to the mosque number no. 7, the largest mosque in the country, which at the time was being led by a 31-year-old preacher named Malcolm X. In this letter, Malcolm gives an overview to the commissioner, stating that his religion is the religion of peace. Through his writing, it is calm and not blatant with hatred and rage. Malcolm urges for justice, having wrote, If these ignorant white officers are allowed to remain in the Harlem area, their presence is not only a menace to society, but to world peace. Pending further investigation, their immediate suspension and removal from the police force is advised, requested, urged, and demanded. Having survived the assault, Johnson X filed a lawsuit against the NYPD, an all-white jury awarded $70,000 to him. This was, at the time, the largest police brutality settlement in New York City. After Malcolm X's release from prison in 1952, he continued to work with the Nation of Islam and helped establish more charters in various cities in the Northeast. With Malcolm X leading with the expansion of temples, the organization's numbers began to swell. In 1955, Malcolm met Betty Sanders, who would three years later become his wife. Together, the two would have six daughters. During the mid to late 50s, Malcolm X came into his own as a talented orator and public figure within the black community. Malcolm's speeches encouraged the black community towards violence as a means to defend themselves and often used wording and phrases that some dissenters have de deemed as racist hate speech towards the white community. As a result of his incendiary speeches, Malcolm X remained under surveillance by the FBI until his death. In March of 1964, Malcolm X officially broke away from the Nation of Islam due to sexual misbehavior from its leader, Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad had had multiple extramarital affairs with Nation of Islam secretaries, which broke the nation's rules and regulations. Malcolm converted to the Sunni sect of Islam after his break from the Nation of Islam. On March 26, 1964, Malcolm gave perhaps his most famous speech titled The Ballad of the Bullet, where he calls the African American community towards unity behind the ideas of nationalism. The nationalism that Malcolm advocates for is the idea that those of the African race should form their own nation. After his resignation, Malcolm and other disillusioned Nation of Islam members created Muslim Mosque Incorporated in March 1964, and after returning from a trip to Africa, he later created the Organi Organization of Africa Unity, whose goal was to unite black men and women around the world and promote Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is the idea that those of African descent around the world should unite in order to see progress for the race as a whole. Malcolm spent the remainder of 1964 traveling and giving speeches promoting the newly formed OAAU and encouraging Pan-Africanism and nationalism. On February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X was scheduled to give a speech at the Audubon Auditorium in Harlem, New York on behalf of the OAAU. During his speech, gunmen associated with the Nation of Islam rushed the stage and fired on Malcolm. Malcolm was pronounced dead later that evening due to the gunshot wounds he sustained. Malcolm's funeral was held in Harlem and was attended by 14,000 to 30,000 people there to mourn his death. Even though Malcolm X's life ended prematurely at the age of 39, his legacy continues to live on. There has been much debate then and now about how to interpret his life and work. Critics of Malcolm point to his use of hate speech and his promotion of violence as grounds to condemn his legacy. However, Many praise his legacy as being courageous in his ability to call African Americans to stop living in fear and to be prepared to protect themselves. However, 
One chooses to view the legacy left by Malcolm X. One thing that can be agreed upon is the lasting effect he left on the African-American community.